Watch this shocking footage of the attempted assassination on Donald Trump and uncover the chilling details of how this terrifying event unfolded. Explore the motives behind the attack, the security measures in place, and the heroic actions that prevented a tragedy. Stay tuned as we delve into the intense investigation that followed this unprecedented incident. Don't miss out on this eye-opening analysis of the assassination attempt on the former President of the United States. On July 13, 2024, at 6.15 p.m., former President Donald Trump survived an assassination attempt during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, USA. In this video, I will explain in detail what happened, using verified information and analyzing the event from multiple perspectives and angles with real footage. We will cover topics such as tactics, the weapon used, distances, the profile of the shooter, the reaction of the Secret Service, and the official statements from the agencies investigating this attack to offer you a complete and objective overview. While we do not rely on conspiracy theories or mere speculations, I admit there are aspects that are quite unusual, which we will discuss later. Now, without further ado, let's begin the full explanation. In this 2024 election year for the United States, Donald Trump is once again in the race for the presidency. During his tour of various towns and cities across the country, he holds rallies and gives speeches to connect with voters. On July 13, 2024, at 6.15 p.m., during a rally in the small town of Butler, Pennsylvania, Donald Trump was the target of an assassination attempt. This is a video of the moment. As you can observe and hear in the footage, multiple shots were fired during the attack. A bullet grazed the top of former President Trump's right ear, causing it to bleed. It is unclear if it was a graze or a fragment, but you can see there is blood. Immediately, Secret Service agents intervened, protecting and evacuating him from the scene. Aware that he had not suffered serious injuries, Trump, before leaving, raised his arm to the crown, which responded with chants of, USA. This action left a striking image of the moment. However, the incident was truly tragic with human losses among the rally audience. The fatal victim was identified as Corey Comparator, a former fire chief from Buffalo, Pennsylvania, who had just celebrated his 50th birthday. The second victim, David Dutch, 57, a resident of New Kensington, Pennsylvania, is currently in stable condition after being injured at the event. The third victim, Jace Kapenhever, 74, from Moon Township, Pennsylvania, is also stable and survived the attack. The assailant, identified as Thomas Matthew Crooks, was positioned on a rooftop outside the fairgrounds and was neutralized by Secret Service snipers. We will delve into both the profile of the attacker and the actions of the Secret Service agents, as both aspects are crucial to understanding the magnitude and implications of this attack. As I mentioned earlier, it is crucial to analyze this incident from multiple perspectives to obtain a more complete understanding of what happened. Next, I present to you a video of the attack captured from the crowd's perspective, where you can see the moment the shooter fires and is neutralized by a shot from the Secret Service. Now, here is another perspective of the attack, but from behind, seeing Donald Trump's back. And finally, I show you the exact moment when the shooter opened fire during the rally from a rooftop, including the sequences in which he was shot by the Secret Service sniper. It is important to highlight a crucial detail. Seconds before Thomas Matthew Crooks opened fire, a local Butler police officer had ascended the ladder to the rooftop where Crooks was lying in a prone position. The officer was investigating a report of a suspicious, possibly armed individual in that area. However, when Crooks aimed his rifle at the officer, the officer fell off the ladder, and almost immediately, Crooks began firing at the rally and Donald Trump. This detail is very important, Crooks was shot by Secret Service snipers about 10 to 12 seconds after he began firing. Witnesses told the BBC and CBS that the armed man was seen climbing onto the roof of a building outside the fairgrounds and that attempts were made to alert law enforcement for several minutes before the shooting occurred. Now, let's move on to other things. I am not an expert in executive protection details, but I have basic knowledge of firearms that allows me to make certain observations. Based on satellite data and the image you can see on the screen right now, the shots at Donald Trump were apparently fired from a distance of approximately 153 meters. If you want to verify this information for yourself, 
The exact location you can search for on any GPS is approximately the coordinates you see on the screen. At the crime scene, it was observed that the shooter used an AR-15 type rifle. Although the exact model and whether it was equipped with an optic sight have not been specified. However, let me point out that, in my opinion, Thomas Crooks was not an expert marksman or anything of the sort. Moreover, it is important to mention that the shot taken was not particularly difficult or unusual. It was not a legendary shot or anything like that, considering the shooting distance was about 153 meters and the flags were waving while Trump was speaking, indicating a light wind with speeds between 6.4 and 11.2 kilometers per hour, corresponding to a Beaufort scale of 2. This was a fairly straightforward shot, not the easiest, of course, but even I and others would consider it beginner level. Think about it. This shot was made against a completely stationary human target at 153 meters, a task that someone with basic shooting knowledge can successfully accomplish. Considering that an AR-15 type rifle typically uses a 5.56 mm cartridge and tends to deviate approximately 2.79 cm at 91 meters and 12.7 cm at 182 meters, the deviation in this case would be around 5.5 cm. As I mentioned, even with basic training, a person should be able to hit a man-sized target at that distance, taking wind drift into account, even with a rifle without a special optic. So far, we do not know if the rifle used had an optic sight, but this could be almost irrelevant if the weapon was not properly zeroed. This is a crucial point worth explaining. Rifles, when taken out of the box for the first time, are generally not ready for precise use at long distances, they need to be zeroed. This is a process that involves adjusting the sights to a specific distance to ensure the bullet hits the center of the target at that distance. If a rifle is not properly zeroed, it will not be accurate. If most of a shooter's experience comes from video games, they might not understand the process of calibrating a rifle. It's not an extremely complicated topic, but it does require prior understanding and proper explanation. At the event, two Secret Service sniper teams were deployed, both positioned on rooftops to the right of the podium, providing them with a wide view of the area. The second team, characterized by wearing black baseball caps, initially had their backs to the shooter. In the emergency, they had to quickly adjust their position to face the threat head-on. On the other hand, the first team, recognizable by their full black hats, was initially facing the shooter. It was this team, specifically the one located further south, that managed to neutralize the shooter, but they were criticized for not acting with sufficient response speed. As new images of the incident emerge, the hypothesis is strengthened that the pair of Secret Service snipers positioned further south were responsible for neutralizing the shooter in Butler, Pennsylvania. An analysis reveals that the team located to the north, i.e., Team 2, faced visual obstructions due to trees and foliage. On the other hand, OSINT analyst Oliver Alexander was correct in his assessment. If the shooter had moved just a few centimeters or a meter to his left, the dense tree cover could have completely hidden him from the view of both sniper teams, providing him with an almost direct shooting opportunity at Trub without being seen. However, as we mentioned, the shooter did not possess advanced sniper skills and, of course, did not anticipate this. Just as an extra fact so you don't stay wondering, the rifle used by the Secret Service snipers who took down Crooks was an MK-13. Equipped with a Night Force ATEC R optic, an Atlas BT 10 bipod for stability on various terrains, and a really right stuff tripod with an anvil ball head for quick angle adjustments. Additionally, the sniper spotters were using an Envision Technology Mars rangefinder for precise distance measurements and Steiner M 180 binoculars that provide a clear and detailed view at long distances. It is also crucial to mention that after the shooting and the start of the investigations in the area, it was discovered that Thomas Matthew Crooks had explosive devices in his car, which was parked near the site of Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. Let's delve into the figure of the shooter. The FBI has officially identified Thomas Matthew Crooks, a 20-year-old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. So far, no clear motive for his intentions has been determined, and the investigation continues. According to KDKA-TV, Crooks graduated from Bethel Park High School in 2022 and, according to the BBC, had been working at a local nursing home since then. The FBI office in Pittsburgh reported that Crooks had no criminal record and was not on the radar of any security agency. 
There are also no indications that he was undergoing a mental health crisis or anything like that. But a very intriguing detail is that records from the U.S. Federal Election Commission indicate that Crooks made a single donation of $1 to the Liberal Progressive Turnout Project PAC on the day President Joe Biden was inaugurated in January 2021. Curiously, he registered as a Republican in September of that same year, adding an element of complexity and confusion to his profile. I'm not saying this gives us the answer, but it is definitely what is known as a lead in a criminal case. Crook's father, Matthew Crooks, told CNN that he was trying to understand what the hell is going on and expressed his willingness to cooperate with authorities. It was revealed that the AR-15 rifle used in the shooting was purchased by Crook's father about six months before the incident. A former schoolmate reported that Thomas Crooks had suffered extreme bullying almost daily, both for his appearance and personality, which could add more nuances to his profile. An interesting detail that almost no one is mentioning is this image captured by security cameras showing Thomas Crooks. But what is interesting is his shirt. For those who are gun enthusiasts, they recognize that this merchandise is from the Demolition Ranch channel, the largest gun channel on YouTube. In this image you see on the screen, the letters DMNRCH can be clearly seen on the chest of Crook's shirt, which belong to the word Demolition from the Demolition Ranch channel. Look, here is an image of the online merchandise. You don't have to be a genius to see it's the Demolition Ranch shirt. Obviously, Matt Carricker, owner of the Demolition Ranch channel, has no relation to the attack. However, this small but significant detail of the shirt suggests that Crooks was probably a gun enthusiast. In fact, Matt Carricker expressed his dismay on Instagram with a post that said, What the hell, just hours after the shooting? The FBI, which was conducting the investigations, officially classified the Pennsylvania shooting as an attack against former president and presidential candidate Donald Trump, but also categorized it as an act of domestic terror. The key elements in the investigation, such as the phone found on Thomas Matthew Crook's body and the 5.56 caliber AR-15 rifle he used during the assassination attempt, have been sent to the FBI laboratory in Quantico, Virginia, for thorough analysis. This procedure is crucial as it will provide valuable information about Thomas Crook's intentions and psychological profile. It is also crucial to analyze the Secret Service's performance during this attack. Although they managed to neutralize Crook's in the end, they did not escape severe criticism for their delayed reaction and failure to anticipate such attacks. Public concern is completely justified. It is surprising that potential shooting positions on nearby rooftops within 200 meters of the president were not adequately evaluated. Furthermore, it is concerning that a young man with a rifle ascending a ladder to a shooting position was not detected in time when reports had already been received from the audience. Even more critical is that the Secret Service snipers, who are supposed to be considered among the best in the world, did not neutralize Crooks the moment his finger touched the rifle trigger. Undoubtedly, security measures could have been much more rigorous, considering whom they were protecting. Crooks should have been intercepted as soon as he took his rifle and as soon as he began climbing to the roof. Protection experts have pointed out that the main failure in this incident was the lack of effective communication between local police, state police, and the Secret Service, as well as their snipers, which contributed to the grave assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. House Republicans have requested that Kim Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service, appear before Congress to address the deficiencies in the Secret Service's performance during the incident in Pennsylvania. Philip Giraldi, a former military intelligence officer and CIA operations officer, in an interview with Sputnik, said the following, For over 20 years, I have closely followed the performance of the Secret Service in protective details at embassies and during visits by congressmen and other high officials, and it has always been excellent, explained Giraldi. That is why I am surprised that this time they did not have control of a rooftop less than 200 meters from the podium with a clear line of sight to it. According to him, failing to secure this position represents a failure in planning or execution, and will likely force someone to answer tough questions about procedural omissions. Finally, please, my brothers, avoid being part of those who spread misinformation and claim that it was all staged or come up with baseless conspiracy theories. I understand that there are theories that may make some sense, but everything must be based on facts. Especially in something as important as the attempted assassination of a former president, it is crucial that as an audience we opt for reliable sources. 
With that, I bid you farewell and wish you an excellent day.